Welcome to our latest tips and tricks video made to accompany our newsletters. In this video, we'll be looking at how to use association chart to help us understand relationships, and then we want to get a different view of the information, convert it into a sequence of events chart. We'll also be able to do it the other way around. We'll then be able to look at iBase to see how to recategorize things like sets to help us find them and to help fellow users find them easily and to share them. So first of all, let's look at Analyst Notebook. So in Analyst Notebook, you often want to look at information from several different perspectives. Sometimes you want to focus on relationships between things. Who knows who? Who met who? Who called who? You may also want to focus on when those things took place. We typically use an association chart to show the relationships and a sequence of events chart to show the order or sequencing of those things that happen. Now, if you build the chart in the right way to start with, you can easily take one chart, such as an association chart, and copy and paste it into a timeline, and vice versa. So first of all, let's remind ourselves how to make a sequence of events in Analyst Notebook in the first place. Here I have a chart that's simply got two entities on, and all I'm doing is just trying to show, and remind you how this works. The blue circle, if I go and have a look at its properties, has already got a date and time filled in under item properties. And here is the date and time. This is where it has to go to do the sequencing. And then here I have the option as to whether effectively it's using that date and time to do the sequencing, to control. Now, if I set it to be free for the moment, and I go to the blue square, I also see it has a date and time, and I also make it free. And what you'll find is you can just move things around there is no concept of using that date and time to effectively sequence the event. That's what I use on association charts. Now let's go and have a look at making them controlling. And what you'll find now is I can't move the blue square before the circle. It just doesn't make sense. Similarly, I can't move the blue circle after the blue square. So it's maintaining them in the correct sequence. Now, you'll notice I haven't got the time bar on in Alice Notebook. It's not needed, but if you want to understand things better, sometimes it's good to put it on. On the View tab, turn on the time bar, and these controlling items, you can see the triangle. And as I move the events, that triangle moves with it. That's effectively our sequence of events chart. OK, let's go to the association chart I have. Clearly, we're all clicking at some phone calls here. And each phone call has been put on as a separate link. Behind each link, we've put on the date and time. Now, you'll notice there's no option for free or controlling because with the chart as I currently have it, it cannot make them controlling. It just can't lay it out right. That's what we want to do differently with our sequence of events chart. So having prepared the chart in the right way, first thing we should do is to say we're using the association chart to help us understand relationships. That's what it's for. So, for example, I can now easily tell I seem to have two separate networks. There's the big network at the top, where everything is somehow interconnected. Then down the bottom here, you have a separate smaller network. I can also see, for example, things like the phone up here and the phone here are connected more times than any other. And, for example, I've got this call, this phone here, it's been called by two of our phones of interest all typical association chart type questions. However, now I'd like to understand the sequence in which these calls happened. So I'm going to do a control A to select everything. I'm going to come up to my quick access toolbar here, and there's two buttons to do with copying. One is copy to new association chart, and one is copy to timeline chart. Let's choose that one. It converts the entities on its new chart into things like theme lines. It makes those links controlling. And what I can now see is that the first set of calls all happen on a Monday, 25th of March. There's then a couple of days of inactivity, and then there's more calls on Thursday. That's the sort of thing we can see from the sequence of events chart. Also, I can start to understand more detail so, for example, these two phones here, they're the ones that called each other six times. 
the calls are happening both on a Monday and on a Thursday. Whereas down the bottom here, we have these two phones where they're in communication. However, it's only on the Monday. That's why we use sequence events charts to help us understand that sort of detail. Now, should I wish to, I may have drawn this chart first and then wish to see it as an association chart. So I'll just quickly do it the other way around. Control A, select all. Copy to a new association chart. And there we have our network. Okay. That's that bit done. Now let's go and have a look at iBase. So in this section, we're going to look at iBase and we're going to focus on sets for a moment. So first of all, I have a set. It's currently called People of Interest and it's stored in a folder called Mark. So that's People of Interest. And if I open up the set, I have four entities I'm interested in, in this case. They have to be four people. Now, sets are excellent ways of being able to grab records of interest for any reason and then save them for use later. So here I've got four people I'm looking at. I've had to do four searches to find each one separately. I don't want to have to do that again, so I'll put them in a the set. Now, this set, it turns out, is in the wrong folder. I've put it in a set in a folder called Mark. But actually, it's for my Tips and Tricks video, so I should put it in the Tips and Tricks folder. So I need to recategorize it. But also, at the moment, I'm the only one who can see it. But there's a team of us who work on the newsletter. So I would like that to be available to all those relevant users in that right folder. So what I do is I go to find the set of interest. I right click on it and I choose categorize. And hopefully you recognize this dialog. This is the dialog that pops up when you save things like sets, queries, etc. So first of all, I'm going to change folder. Now it's in tips and tricks. If I want to make a new folder, it does tell me here how to do it, this section here. I simply type in here what I would like the folder to be called. And then down the bottom, here you can see that currently it's private, only for me. Public would mean everyone who can log into iBase can see it, or restricted to groups means only this team or group of people that I want can effectively share that tip and trick. Underneath, you'll see it looks grayed out, um, but it is ticked. That will then allow all those people who have access to the newsletter team information will be able to see that. We'll have a look at how that's done in designer in a moment, just in case you need to tell your designers how to do it, or you are an iBase designer. Click OK. And now if I go to tips and tricks folder, there's people of interest and anyone who is in my group of newsletter people will be able to see it. So hopefully that makes sense. Now, lots of things can be saved in folders and categorized. So as an example, if I open up queries, I have a whole load of queries in here, including, for example, tips and tricks and mark. If I needed to move any of those queries to the tips and tricks folder, I could just simply right click categorize and go through the same process. Okay, so that's from the user's point of view. Now, if you want to use this idea of restricted to groups and it's not been made available to you, this piece here, it's grayed out, this actual button, then what you need to do is talk to your designer and tell them you would like these users to share the information and you give them the name of the group you would like to have. They can then go and set that up for you. If you're an iBase designer, this is how you do it. I'm just going to go to iBase designer. Okay, so I'm going to go and log in. Of course, I have to be allowed to do this and have permissions. So I'm logging in as my administrator. Now this dialog I find a little frustrating. I don't actually want to create a new database or open an existing one. Actually, this cancel, which seems a bit odd. So now I'm logged in, I've got permissions to change security, but I'm not logging all my people out or locking all my people out. Under security, I've got security manager. I then have groups, and it's the blue group we're talking about. So if I open up my blue group, here's my newsletter team. If I open that up, 
I have two users in my database who are allowed to share things between them, such as folder objects like sets, by using this restricted group. Now to make one, you simply right click, new, give it a name, and then you simply tick which users are in that group. Click OK, log off, and then the next time your users log back in, they will have access to those groups and can save in that way. If you'd like to get hold of our newsletters that go with these videos, which have lots more information, including uh, the news that's happening for us as a company, the tips and tricks written out, which you may prefer instead of video, schedules that are coming up, what things we're doing, what courses we're running, and so on, then please do visit our website. And if you get a newsletters, you can download them all, share them with your colleagues. If you would like to subscribe to the newsletters, please get in touch with us by email. Tell us you would like to have newsletters sent to you, and then we'll email you a PDF of the newsletter when they come out. If you found this useful, please feel free to share with your colleagues. If you think of any tips and tricks that you think would be useful to share, let us know. If you've got any issues and things you would like to be taught how to do, get in touch with us and we'll maybe put it in our next newsletter. Thank you.